Isaiah Jenkins had, had a great game as well. That's B&E Byron Evans, uh, who has in uh, the last couple of years uh, really come along. And it, since you've been here, the two years now. Well, they're growing together. They're getting to know each other. I think Bud puts them in the right places. He utilizes their strength. And uh, they're a swarming defense. And, and to be able to lead against the rush in the pass is unique. Let's talk about uh, offense, because we're going to look at what happened against the Giants. Keith Byers. Excellent uh, change of direction here. I think he's really getting in, into the groove of running the football. And he's a load. He's hard to tackle. The more he runs, the better he gets, he says. There's no question. And the stronger he gets. And, of course, you got your solid hitting, too, Andre Waters. Well, Ooh, Andre wow. is a hitter. Uh, every time you play us, you, you better be prepared to get hit. Eric Allen, who, if he doesn't make the Pro Bowl team, I will be very disappointed. I think he's the mo most proficient corner in the league. Five he's, interceptions all on the road. He, he's, he's everywhere he should be. He doesn't lose his poise. His uh, joiner right here, who is probably the most complete linebacker in the league at his position, doing a magnificent job each and every week. Next week, the Pro Bowl comes out, right? Yes, it does. Reggie White going to make the Pro Bowl again this year? Well, he, I would think he has to. Okay. So you could have five or six guys. I think it would be great, and I think they're well-deserving. And Clyde Simmons is having a, a banner year, and everybody's putting pressure on the quarterback, and we're holding the coverage behind the rush. That's it. That's the case. Whereas last year, you would give up the long ball. You can. We were great against the rush, but we were poor against the pass. Here's the key play of the game, I thought, because he coughed up the ball. If they score coming down the other way at that time of the game, I thought maybe that would be it. Yeah, you never know, but they're exactly right. You play hard, good things happen. Here's the key to this win right here, it. number seven. He, uh, he's uh, done a magnificent job, and I think when he kicked the 51-yarder, he had about five more yards he could have added on to it. Very quietly, just doing the job. That's what he's methodical. Now, when he comes up to you before the game, he says, hey, well, of course, the Astrodome, he knows. But uh, on any given day, does he say, I'm good from 50 for this? Yeah, well, we're always whatever. talking to him and talking to Dave Atkins, and it, a lot depends with the win. When I made the decision to go for the 51-yard field goal, there was no wind at that time. And I've been at that stadium for seven years, and that's why I didn't hesitate. We were kicking it, and he kicked it. All right. This week, uh, awards were given out. The Eagles fly for leukemia. Bill Walsh was in town. You gave your offense, your defensive uh, standouts, Jim McMahon and uh, Seth Joyner. And the special teams went to? Otis Smith. And, boy, I tell you, he's special. Well, he's got to be special. And it was a special day because he got a game ball. And he gave the game ball to his dad. And meet Otis Smith. Smith, of course, that'll be a big loss. He and Eric... With Ben in that defensive secondary. But we must talk of this week. The Cowboys are in town. That means a lot to the people here in Philadelphia. You've only been here a couple of years. You haven't been through the wars. But you feel it in the locker room with the guys that have been around a while with the oh, yeah. America's team? And the stories I hear about the snowballs and yes, all that stuff. Yes, right. Yeah, I, uh, I get the feeling as well. Okay. And they do in Dallas as well, too, by the way. I mean, they're going to play the Eagles. Yeah. I feel good about it our team and I feel good about our team going up against anybody and uh, the fact the Eagles play good defense that's great good for them but uh, you know we're gonna find a way to come out on top from Sunday come on, let's go the rich coat type show with Al Meltzer will continue on channel 10 one second one second hey! I will prepare intensely um, by the same token try to relax toward the end of the week and just go into it with, with a fairly, uh, you know, basic mentality. I, I don't need to mastermind the Dallas Cowboys. I just need to, you know, fill my own shoes and play the way I can play, and, and uh, I think we'll do real well. Spoken like an Ivy Leaguer. I think uh, he will do real well. Oh, yeah, he's, he's ready. He's prepared. I think he's more relaxed than he's ever been. He knows what his teammates think about him. And all he has to do what he has to do, and everyone else do what they have to do. Well, he hasn't been here long, but he'll find out, if he hasn't found out already, that this is not just a football game. This is a game against America's team. From Tom Landry to Jimmy Johnson, from Roger Staubach to Troy Aikman, from Tony Dorsett to Emmett Smith, and on and on. The Dallas Cowboys are a new bunch. But they're bringing back the old pride that made Dallas a mark of steam. He tried to make it a bounty bowl or something. Well, there was nothing proud about the snowball slinging, Zendaya's dumping, pork chop throwing days when Buddy faced off against Jimmy. Our day will come. The Eagle Cowboy rivalry just seems to intensify as two teams joust for position in the ever changing hierarchy of the NFC East. 
Last they met, the Eagles were just beginning to attain their one of the best ever defensive recognition. Why would a quarterback subject himself to 11 sacks? Because I'm stupid enough to enjoy getting hit once in a while. Okay. Will you enjoy 11 today like Troy Aikman did last time? I hope so. <laughs> hope we can get that many again. If they can, it'll be a wonder. This is a very different Dallas team. Depth. It's a sign of a contender. Troy Aikman goes out with a knee sprain and in steps Steve Berline, who doesn't skip a beat. And who wouldn't handing the ball to Emmett Smith and passing it to Emmett's fellow perfectionist, Michael Irvin? They're very, very hard and critical on themselves. Uh, they can make nine great plays in a row and then have the tenth one not go exactly the way they want it, and they're not happy. The career of Emmett Smith is going exactly the way Jimmy Johnson has wanted it. Emmett Smith is heating up the NFL in rushing statistics and on his way to rewriting the Cowboy record books. With 1,216 yards already this season, Smith has a realistic goal. Uh, I would like to achieve over 1,500 by the end of the season. And uh, I, mean, I have a long way to go. If Emmett reaches his goal, it may not bode well for the Eagles. Dallas is 9-1 in games when Smith has had the fuel to surpass the 100-yard mark this season. What does the NFL's top defense have to say about that? I'm not going to say anything to light any fuel on, on, on the nobody's butt. Michael Irvin has been eating them up all season. He's already established a new Cowboy single-season record, 78 catches. You can't give him an inch. In the NFL, you get maybe two, three inches. Well, okay, two or three inches. But it's what Irvin does after the catch that separates him from defensive backs and other receivers. Yep, you're piling up the big stats, Michael, and the Bucks to match. Speaking of Bucks, Dallas paid a bundle to land this year's top draft pick, defensive tackle Russell Maryland. And Russell is paying back in a big way. Good shuffle and more aggressive on it, right? Behind the aggressive play of Isaac Holt and others, Dallas has retained NFC East respectability. And with a load of high draft choices coming up, they're well on their way to achieving much more as a starter or backup. Got to like that. Well, all right, let's talk about the Cowboys right now. And uh, Berline will be the quarterback. Aikman will dress, but Berline's going to be the quarterback. And Sid Gilman says he's the quarterback of the future in the entire league. What do you think? I think he's a good quarterback. He's a lot like Aikman. Uh, he, can, uh, he can move. He can, he's accurate. We have to put a lot of pressure on him. Emmett Smith. We've already talked about him, of course, but he is something special, isn't he? He's something special, but, uh, you know, we just can't let him get to the line of scrimmage like we did in the first game. Michael Irvin. Big playability, uh, a strong receiver, excellent speed. Uh, we have to have close coverage on him so we don't give him anything cheap. Well, we talked about their offense, and uh, that's what it is with Irvin and, and, and the quarterback. But what about their defense? Well, the defense is a four-man line that swarms to the ball, very opportunistic, and as of late, really liking to blitz. Are they, let, let's say, well, I don't know how you think. Is this a much better defense than last year, for instance, when you game plan against them? Uh, I would say th they're improved. How much, I don't know, but they're improved. I thought they were pretty good last year. Russell Maryland, has he turned out to be okay? Yes, he has. Very quick, uh, excellent uh, uh, pass rush, and uh, he's starting to show that he was, uh, you know, the, the highest draft uh, pick of the whole uh, the whole college draft. Now we come to that monumental moment on this show when uh, you are giving us Kotite's keys to victory. Okay. Six weeks in a row. All right. Offense, good ball control. We're the number one time of possession team in the National Football League. Now we have to continue to do that. All right. Secondly, just as we've been doing, keep the turnovers down. We'd like to have no turnovers and have our defense turn the ball over and get it for us. And third, just like we've been saying all the time, we've got to protect our quarterback. We've got to protect Kent. Now, the other side of the line, we could just fill in the line and say, play like you've always played. But basically, you've got to right. stop this guy. But defensively, we always take the stance, you have to stop the run first. And the run means Emmett Smith. Mm -hmm. After that, we want to pressure the quarterback, make him hurry, try to sack him. And, and the third thing is no big plays. Stick close to those receivers. Don't break the coverage and, and, and make them earn everything. All right, j just one other little thing. Tighten up a little bit on those special teams off of the last game, okay? No question. Our coverage teams, uh, I thought we, we made some crucial mistakes. Uh, I think we've corrected them. 
Uh, it wasn't lack of effort, but I think uh, it's going to be a, a big part of the game. Their special teams against ours. Big game, big game. It's always a big game when you play the Cowboys, particularly now with playoffs on the line. Come on, let's go! The Rich Coatside Show with Al Meltzer will continue on Channel... Well, you're finally home. You know, three weeks in a row. You're on the road. You got to win. You got to win. And you win. And now you're home. I think this is the week to come home. The Dallas game... The fans are really going to help us get everybody excited, and uh, it would be great to get a 10th win here. Playoff implications all over the place for this game. Yeah, and I think you just can't look beyond this game and let things take care of themselves because very possible the 16th game is going to settle it. What is it about the Eagles and the Cowboys? Uh, you guys will have trouble with the Redskins. They can beat the Redskins, but they can't beat the Eagles kind of stuff. And not just one or two or three seasons. Just look over the, the last ten years kind of thing. What is it about the Eagles and the Cowboys? I don't know, but uh, I, uh, I was here two years, and we beat them every, every time, and it hasn't been easy. But this is going to be a tough ball game. It should be a great game, and I'm looking for us to be, you know, ten wins. Well, look, if going off the first game in in Dallas when your team was not anywhere near as proficient defensively as it is now and you clean their clock there with 11 sacks and a 24 to nothing win you, you got to figure you're even better of course they're a little bit but you're even better than you were when you beat them the last time I, I think so but I think that they they came out trying to throw the ball all over the place and I think that hurt I think they're going to try to run the ball run the ball and take their shots throwing the ball but this we're both improved both teams I'm glad we have them at home yeah, and, and another thing, you don't have to look at the scoreboard or anything. You know, you win, you go. You don't worry about anything else. It doesn't anymore. matter. It's been a heck of a year, isn't it? Yeah, we got to keep it going. Rich, you've done an amazing job, and we'll talk about that another time, which means next week, because next week is the last game of the season. Uh, right now, we will have, of course, the Dallas Cowboys here. Then there's a live show, a post-game show. Ronnie Burke and I will be with you uh, immediately after the game. And next week, we're going to wrap it up and talk about the Washington Redskins. But right now, it's the Dallas Cowboys. For Rich Kotite, this is Al Meltzer. So long, everybody. Y stop X7 right. There's a wide delay.